much. He hasn't really been in touch with anyone outside of the inner circle these days. He says, I got a new phone and I have like 30 people in my contacts. A lot of my artist friends I haven't spoken to. Quaver, I haven't seen him forever. But whenever I see Quaver, I'm like, fuck, dude, let's go. So much love. You really learn to appreciate those moments together even more. So clearly, you know, he's got told to distance himself from Travis Scott, which again must be just pick just for a moment. Think about how it must feel to be Travis Scott right now. One moment your phone is blaring and you're, you know, you can't, every time you flip and turn your phone on or you flip it over, there's another notification. Somebody else trying to get something from you. Somebody just wants to do a deal with you. Somebody, basically people trying to pull from you as much as possible or stand next to you so they can get a bit of your rub, a bit of your shine. And then suddenly in a matter of a couple of hours, your phone line is dead because you're now contaminated, you're toxic. It kind of reminds me of, I don't know if it's ever happened to you, but it's happened to me a couple of times. Whenever you get let go from a company sometimes you know unfairly you maybe have that thing where you're getting your stuff on the table and you're going to leave and the people that used to sit around who you know you'd share so many you know um, personal stories with you'd go out together at night you maybe get some dinner you might even go on a holiday together from time to time these people you count as your friends right these colleagues you get you go to pick up your stuff and suddenly these people don't even want to look at you. You, you you've become you're like you're like a leper you know what I mean, and they, they just all kind of conveniently turn away and let you pack your stuff away on your own. Maybe one person stands up and helps you, but for the most part, they just leave you alone because you've been marked with the with the with the cross. You know what I mean, you've got the you've got the um, yeah, you've got the mark on you. So no one wants to come near you because they don't want to be contaminated too. That's what it kind of feels like. And I can only imagine it being probably far more brutal in Hollywood or in the entertainment industry because a lot of your value is on how much of a star you can be and how much you can be of help or of assistance to other people right you need to get basically clout that's what you're in it for and the more clout you have the more access you have to people the more earning potential you have and just you know the more you basically get to fill your ego um and basically get to kind of uh, scratch that itch out of your back in terms of wanting to be very very well known and then to go from that to go to pure silence no more dms no more unsolicited calls no more crazy emails proposing you to invest in a restaurant in some flipping helicopter pad in the middle of Dubai, like none of those craziness, just you on your own, you you and your actual team, your actual friends who legit care about you and that's it. That must be absolutely brutal. I can only imagine how that must feel. I really, really can't imagine how that must feel. Um, and obviously with Post Malone, he just has to protect himself in that regard, but it also kind of echoes something he must have said about Ethan Klein in it from H3H3, who was moaning and bitching on these podcasts that, you know, post came on their show a couple of times did that hollywood thing where he basically pretended he was their friend and then essentially ghosted them and hasn't returned their texts or calls because clearly he was changing his phone on purpose because again i'm that person as well that's why i kind of maybe relate to post malone's personality a lot because i'm similar in that way like if i want to talk to you i will if i don't then i won't so the fact that he says he changes his phone is probably his way of basically letting people know subliminally that hey i'm moving because I mentioned it a few times on here too, and it like people breaking up with you as friends is horrible. It's brutal. It really is the worst thing in the world. And maybe it's for the best when people like I've kind of changed my mind on it. I really, really have when it comes to ghosting. I was one person that didn't that hated ghosting. I thought it was really, you know, it's I won't say cruel. It just lacked common decency. Like if somebody, if you kind of in contact with somebody and you're arranging to meet or your friends or whatever it may be you owe them and you kind of decided to do something together you owe them either a heads up that you're not going to do it an explanation an apology or but some sort but but whatever is some sort of communication you don't just stop talking to the person and ignore them i've done it myself again i'm not talking from a point of you know being the perfect human being i've done it myself and i've suffered greatly for it in terms of consequences um to the point where a couple of these relationships are basically unrepairable maybe one can be repaired to a certain extent but most of them are basically done because i decided to you know to be like the the um the mysterious guy the disappearer that i don't have friends thing you know the same boring stuff i talk about myself all the time but in actuality ghosting people I thought at that time wasn't really nice to do. But I've also come around to the thinking that sometimes in life, not doing a nice thing is actually the best thing. Because what would you rather? Would you rather somebody legitimately tell you why they don't want to hang out with you for real? Like, do you really want to know? I don't think people do want to know. Like, if, you're, if you've if got a work colleague, I've had, it happened to me mostly at work. 
there's usually a person that you work with, boy or girl, it doesn't matter who it is, who can't handle the liquor. They're not really good with their drinks. They're not really good around people the opposite sex who they're into or whoever they're into. They get a little bit larry, they get a bit touchy, they get a bit handsy. They do that thing where they maybe talk to security guards that like they want to fight them. They maybe pester bartenders. They've got just an annoying trait about them that makes them a nightmare to go out with. That person doesn't really want to know why you all keep avoiding them on a Friday night or a Thursday after work. They don't really want to know. They kind of want to be in a state of kind of ambivalence. So I'm putting that. Naivete. They kind of just, they kind of want to live in fa- in like a fairyland somewhere. They want to have their head in the clouds as to why you're not inviting them out. Deep down, they know why, but they don't actually want to know why. So I think sometimes as people ghost you, it's like a, it's like a humane way and a kind way to basically let you know this ain't going to work out. And it's probably for the best because you don't really want to know what they actually think. Because when you find out what they actually think, you might not want to get out of bed for the next seven days. You know what I mean? It probably might ruin your entire year, right? It might maybe harm your entire way of basically making friends. Like I've mentioned before in the podcast, no, I mentioned before in the video talking about <clears throat> the Brian Cannon and Brendan Shaw thing and all the Chris Lear stuff. I mentioned part of the reason why it triggered me so much is because I had a very traumatic you know, experience with some friends growing up where basically I had this group of friends who I thought were my friends when I was growing up in a little area I used to live in. And then because this cooler kid came in to live in our neighborhood, suddenly my group of friends basically ditched me and hanged out with the other kid because he was cooler, which he probably was. His parents let him come out more. They let the other kids go around his house. You know, African parents are not letting you come in anywhere. Um, you know, whatever. His, his house had wood flooring. Remember back that being a thing back in the old was younger. Like your house having wood flooring, his fridge was full of Coca Colas and shit. Mine was just full of those kind of off brand cola bottles that you'd get from like little that were like two liters and they taste like shit after you open them. <laughs> so clearly they ditched me. And then I remember one day I went to go and try to hang out with them. No, I was trying to find them and they kept running away. Or not running away, like They'd, they'd keep saying I'm, they're over here and they wouldn't be over there they'd be over somewhere else and then finally I found them I tried to like hang out with them and they basically said go away Zingo we don't want to be your friend anymore and that one occasion is basically what led me to be this guy that runs into a camera or into a microphone on my own <laughs> all these years later as dumb as that story is that legitimately might be the genesis as to why although I'm quite personable and quite an extrovert I'm also quite introverted and I don't like to hang out with people at all. I try to basically keep myself to myself, which is basically a defense mechanism to not be hurt. But if they would have ghosted me back then and just pretended or no, or just left me alone and just ignored me, I would have got the message and it would have been less brutal. And I would have been in denial as to why they didn't want to be my friend, but at least (laughs) it wouldn't have hurt me this way. (laughs) So I think maybe ghosting is a good thing it really might be a a slight good thing to get ghosted because it's their way of letting you know, hey, in a somewhat subtle, humane, kind, um, looking after your feelings way, this ain't going to work out. Let's just leave it. The same thing thing can be said for job interviews. Do you want a job interview to really write you a one page as to why you didn't get the job? Do you really want them to do that? To tell you when you came in, you were sweating too much. That meant you were running. That meant you were late. To tell you, that maybe you didn't answer the question correctly, that maybe tell you that you didn't know what the question really was, you didn't you know, understand it grammatically, to tell you your experience was terrible, to tell you they only sat you down to interview you because they felt sorry for you. Do you really want to know the truth? No, you don't. You don't want to know the truth. Just pretend like, you know, they'll pretend like you, you didn't send the email, you'll pretend like they didn't re- read it, or you make up a story that they're racist, whatever it may be. It'll help, it'll let you sleep well at night, and then the next day you can apply again. That's probably, probably the best way to go about things. Because when people get really honest, it can really hurt your feelings. So ghosting might be one of the good things in life. I have to agree. I have to just put that out there. But, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm being dumb. Maybe I'm being dumb. <laughs>